and welcome to uh, LINK 2022. Uh, I'm Dr. Paul Bogle and I'm here with uh, my good colleague, Dr. Pedro uh, Navia. We're here to just have a quick discussion around uh, some of the issues that we are dealing with, with distal M2 and distal Mevos uh, and regards to Seronovus products. Hello, Paul. Very Hi. nice to meet you here in LINK, in the 25th anniversary of LINK. Yeah? Wow, yeah. So it's nice to chat a little bit about digital. I agree, and, I agree. With you. So one of the first things, Pedro, that I'd like to ask is, how important do you think the uh, role of the base catheter and the guide catheter are and could you share us with us your experience? Yeah, sure. You know, I, I do like to do aspiration as the first technique. Mm -hmm. So when I want to go up with a large bore catheter, I prefer to, to go very up with yeah. a, a guiding catheter like mm -hmm. uh, Cerveis. Okay. So to put it in the Petros uh, segment, for example, is very good. Then you have most of the case done yeah. because you have the, the enough support to do it. But also, if you want to go distal, it's mm. important eh? mm. because sometimes you, ha you have to go with an extent yeah. so this support is always important. Yeah. Well, according to you, what, what are the two watch out uh, related to M2 occlusions? Because we are talking about MIVOS. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think um, some of the issues here relate around essentially where the clot is within the uh, M2 branches. Um, an understanding of the basic anatomy uh, is essential to make sure that you're not tracking your wires, your catheters, your stents too far out. So you have to have a good understanding of uh, the M23 and then M34 anatomy, which all interventional neuroradiologists should have. Also the bifurcation. So many of these uh, clots are stuck at bifurcations. Um, so you need to ideally be using a device that will grip a clot and hold the clot even if, it's, uh, even if the clot is wedged in a sort of bifurcation. And I think one of the other things is also that we shouldn't forget that M2 occlusions and distal occlusions, MEVOs, can actually also be quite long. So sometimes you, you do need to pick the right length device um, to make sure that you are capturing all of the clot within the device. All right, absolutely. Could you tell us, Pedro, why do you think that the EMBO trap uh, is your first choice uh, stent retriever? Yeah, when I go in the stall, for example, I, when I want to do a, a combined treatment with mm -hmm. an aspiration catheter, I do like Embo Trap okay. because you can go very easily. It navigates very good. For me, it's the stand treatment that navigates the best. And the other thing is that when you are doing the combined treatment and you impact your uh, catheter mm -hmm. and to do the aspiration, you pull out a stent trigger a little bit and you feel very well that you have yeah. catch the clot and you feel it better than with a regular stent trigger. I think it's because of the construction uh, yeah. of the bot trap that makes it uh, different. Which are the features that you, according to you, uh, embo trap can make the difference for other stent trigger? Do, do, you, do you have other features? Yeah, so, so the, the two features that actually I really like about the embo trap device are essentially the distal clock capture which i think is going to be uh, become even more important as studies progress and we've seen with choice that actually uh, even uh, the delivery of uh, intra-arterial tpa can start to target some of these uh, clot losses so if you can avoid losing the clot by capturing it then that's going to be an advantage and i think the segmented design uh, also because it allows good confirmation particularly in curves and the problem that you can have is the more uh, traditionally designed stent retrievers they transmit the force along their entire length and that can cause a lot of uh, like friction on the vessel a lot of straightening of the vessel and the further out you go particularly in the smaller branches uh, with more and more tortuosity and more curves, you're going to see this more and more frequently. And that, I think, will result in plucking off of small perforating branches, let's say from M2, going to the insula, etc., etc. So you want a device that is going to conform nicely, that you don't have to worry about uh, uh, sizing, have I picked the right size, etc., etc. With the Embo Trap, it's, it's usable from 1.5 up to you know, 5 or 6.5, dependent on the diameter that you choose. So these are the things that for me uh, really help to start, help the uh, Embo Trap device to stand out. And I fully agree that the trackability and the visibility of the device are uh, some of the best in class actually. Yeah, absolutely. So 
I will keep talking with you. It's, it's always a pleasure, Paul. Yeah. Uh, but we have to close. I, I, I hope to see you next link or maybe before in the Brain Conference in December in London. Then London, that would be a pleasure. It would be my pleasure to yeah, see you there. So thank you very much. Thank and you. See you. Thanks very much.